Peter, is the threat of the far right being overplayed by some politicians, do you think, in, in regard to law and order in this country? The expression far right is now being used very lazily, I might hasten to add, and often very inaccurately to describe anybody who harbours concerns about perhaps the rise of Islam or who is deeply concerned about unfettered migration into our country from people on small boats who we simply don't know who they are and where they've come from. Now that label is pinned on anyone. And what it is, is an assault on free speech. So that if people were, were to be heard in public having such a conversation and expressing their concerns, they might be frowned upon and that conversation would be ended. It's inaccurate, it's lazy, and it doesn't apply to millions of decent, law-abiding, concerned British citizens. Well, I think you raise a good point. I mean, 4.1 million people voted for Reform UK, and uh, one of the key flagship policies was about reducing legal net migration to a sensible, manageable level. Well, that's the words of Nigel Farage, not me. And, of course, to stop the boats. Uh, but it's also clear, isn't it, Peter, that some people got on buses and trains and travelled to Southport to make trouble? Yes, some people did. And if anybody wants to throw a brick at police officers, I'll be polite. You're an idiot. Likewise, mm. if you want to set fire to a, a police vehicle, none of that is should be should be happening. And I don't condone any of it in any way, shape or form. And if people who go to take part in such idiocy are met with a robust reaction from the police service, then so be it. They brought it upon themselves. But let's remember... Much of this disquiet that sprung forth in Southport was because a mischievous player put it out onto the, to the internet that uh, completely false information about the person believed to be connected in this attack. False information about their name, where they come from, how they got into the UK. Entirely false. Did we have a senior police officer instantaneously going to the media and calling it out for what it was, something completely fake by a mischievous actor who wanted to stir up hatred? No, we didn't. They were silent. And, and this is the kind of numbskull, over-intellectualised police leadership who do mm. not have the intellectual dexterity to recognise these things, call them out, and keep the streets more peaceful. How chaotic do you think things could get this summer, Peter? Well, I was very glad that I woke up this morning to no bad news. There are, of course, now meetings shed for, scheduled for this evening, tomorrow and Sunday. Please, everybody, mm. let's, let's just behave. Go onto the streets, protest, express your disquiet. Make your feelings well and truly known to everybody. And then what we can hope is that the media reports that accurately, politicians don't spin lies, and frustrated people's voices are heard like they should be in a flagship democracy. And, Peter, briefly, if you can, do the police stand guilty of a two-tiered approach to keeping law and order? We saw absolute carnage in Leeds a couple of weeks ago, a cop car overturned, a bus set on fire, and yet a far more fulsome response in Southport this week. So are double standards at play, and it's a dualistic approach happening when it comes to the police? And an incredibly robust reaction by the Metropolitan Police this week in Whitehall, when the man who would normally be presenting this show found himself being arrested. Let's Martin Dobney, not forget yeah. that. So yeah. this is exactly why the expression two-tier policing has become sealed into the lexicon of British language when it comes to policing. But, of course, public order policing is complicated. There are challenges, and, and, and it would take me an age to explain many of them. But the public perception is in Leeds, the police run away from brown-faced people. In London, they slam white-faced people into the pavement and the road. And that, of course, causes disquiet because it's inconsistent and people are going, what's really going on here?
Can, can you really make that distinction based on skin colour? I mean, it was a diverse group in Leeds. It wasn't only uh, people of uh, black and minority ethnic background. Uh, there were white people involved in the trouble as well. Is it really about skin colour, Peter? That's how some people perceive it, and that's exactly what I said. Um, that's when people perceive it that way. So they talk about two-tier policing. It seems to be inconsistent, and therefore this accusation is made. Now, in Leeds, for example, the, the police there foolishly didn't feel they had sufficient intelligence to be able to get their officers wearing the right public order kit. In London, they felt they did have the intelligence, so they were there in full kit, crash helmets the lot, and were very robust with an awful lot of people, over 100 arrests made. But mm. it seems to be one rule for some and another rule for others. And until we get consistent policing, consistent messages from senior police and politicians when they stop lazily labelling millions of people as something that they fundamentally are not, this disquiet is going to rumble on and rumble on and who knows where it's going to end. Sobering stuff. What a fascinating conversation, Peter. Thank you for your time. Peter Blexley is a former Scotland Yard detective and he's not pulling his punches uh, quite clearly.